Is Tennessee Athletic Director Philip Fulmer capable of hiring a good head football coach? That's the question I'm Arky Bilsom asking today. And look, it's readily apparent Jeremy Pruitt is not going to lead the Tennessee Volunteers to elite status. Eight and five last year, okay. Beating up on tomato cans, that can happen. But he's an inarticulate man, and last year's success was more the result of an easy schedule down the stretch than any grand rebuilding project. Now, there are reasons why not to give him the axe yet. For instance, Tennessee is paying a heck of a lot of money to old football coaches. Give you an example. If the Vols were to tomorrow uh, fire uh, Pruitt, they'd be literally paying three head football coaches. Bruce Jones' uh, contract with the Vols does not run out until 2021. Maybe then he'll get a real coaching job. Who knows? But uh, this is more a situation, I think, of finance and also Phil Fulmer's pride. Look, Jeremy Pruitt's got to be looked through a critical lens right now. Uh, his coaching makes absolutely no sense. The Vols are on a five-game losing streak, two and five overall. It's really difficult to see them not finishing with a worse winning percentage than the 2017 4-8 Tennessee football team, which is considered the nadir of modern Tennessee football times. And I mean going back 100 years modern. But the post-game press conference that Pruitt gave following yesterday's 30-17 to loss to Auburn. By the way, what was with the field goal Auburn kicked at the end? The 50-yarder, was that just a cover? I mean, you know, I, I was a little bit surprised by that one, you know, and all this. I guess not totally out of the realm of uh, possibility or strategy or something like that. But yeah, that did seem to be a little bit of, hmm, we remember what happened here a couple of years ago down in Auburn, Tennessee, and so we're going to run the score up against you. All right, whatever. I saw him do it in 1986. There you go. But here's the deal. After the football game, Jeremy Pruitt, he's got the Zoom press conference, and he is asked about the program's direction. What would you tell fans? And he shoots back, that's not my job. By the way, earlier, speaking of that, Earlier in the press conference, another reporter asked him, okay, would you like to evaluate uh, Jim Chaney's performance as an offensive coordinator? What do you think he's doing? And Pruitt championed the volunteers outgaining Auburn. Now, that's interesting because I always thought it was an offensive coordinator's job to score points, not go 98 yards and fall short. You know, I mean, let's say... But the thing is, it is Jeremy Pruitt's job to give an answer when asked, what would you tell the fans about the direction of the program? He's an ambassador of the program. He's the leading ambassador of the program. Furthermore, he has been critical of the fan base in the past. Remember when he got the job and said there was enough fans at the orange and white game? Hmm. But yet he cannot give the fans at this time a statement of hope in a trying time. I remember Jeremy Pruitt, when he came in, he said, I'm going to do all the talking to the media, the infamous one voice of the Tennessee football program he was going to be. That's a real bad look. And frankly, his voice, Jeremy Pruitt's voice, needs to speak when it's called upon. Now, the problem is if Pruitt was to be fired, after this season or next season, Phil Fulmer would be doing the hire. And his track record hiring a head coach is, no, it's not very good. Now, I should mention this. His tenure as the athletic director of the Tennessee Volunteers has had successes in it. Consider keeping Rick Barnes from going to UCLA. That was big. Considering hiring Brandon Webb three years ago, two years ago, as the Vols uh, head golf coach. The Vols have won five tournaments since uh, Brandon Webb was hired as the golf coach. Uh, last year, he had a lot of conversations with the CEO of the Gator Bowl. That lured the Vols to Jacksonville instead of Nashville 
for their bowl game. So Tennessee got to play in a more prestigious bowl game than, say, the Kentucky Wildcats, who really did have something of a claim to the more prestigious bowl, but uh, didn't work out that way. So Fulmer admits his primary focus is the football team, and an argument can be made that, okay, it's in worse shape than it was before he was hired as the athletic director. They were four and eight. Now they're going on three and seven. 333 winning percentage instead of 300 if Tennessee beats Vanderbilt. More on that in a minute. But let's talk about Fulmer's head coaching hires. Remember, he was an advisor when East Tennessee State revived football about five years ago. And first they asked Fulmer to be the coach, and he said no, and he got him Carl Torbush. That was a hire straight out of 1998. If you don't know, Carl Torbush was the head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels in 1998. He had not been a head coach since 2000 when he got the ETSU football job after about a decade and a half. His career record at ETSU was, get this, 11 and 22. And Torbush was painfully old school. He would talk about not uh, recruiting JUCOs. And then in his very first game, a brand new program, Kennesaw State, both Kennesaw State and ETSU debuted their football programs at the same time. Kennesaw State went to Johnson City, demolished the Buccaneers 56 to 16 with those JUCOs. Kennesaw State is now a top 10 FCS football program. ETSU is coming off a last place season in the Southern Conference. So that hire didn't really work very well for Phil Fulmer and for East Tennessee State. Uh, then you go to Jeremy Pruitt. And that seems to be another old-fashioned hire. Look, Carl Torbush becoming the ETSU head football coach, that was a hire straight out of 1998. That's when both Fulmer and Torbush's careers were peaking. But the situation with Pruitt was, and we know about everybody and her brother turned down Tennessee. They got more uh, money elsewhere. And I think a lot of the reasons there could be Tennessee's expectations exceed their capabilities with the football program right now. Remember, there are a lot of reasons why it's not 1998 anymore. Uh, the revenue now is basically evened up. It's not that the Vols have the huge attendance uh a huge attendance advantage that gives them more revenue. That's uh, somewhat dispersed uh, a little bit differently now. They have the giant TV contracts, the SEC network, and so on. Now everybody else gets a large share of the pie, so to speak. Uh, also, should be mentioned that the Tennessee Volunteers, uh, you know, the state of Tennessee doesn't produce as many football players as does Florida, Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, Texas, Louisiana. So it's difficult for them to get the players that some of their Southeastern Conference rivals will get. That's another factor. I mean, things have changed in college football. And so regardless here, you're looking at Jeremy Pruitt. And he comes in after everybody and his brother turns down Tennessee, first with old athletic director John Curry, and then, I mean, remember Les Miles was talked to. But why Jeremy Pruitt? I said this at the time on my talk show. I did think that hiring a coordinator from Alabama was the way to go, but I wanted Brian DeBolt who is now the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills and doing some really big things. Just like Carl Torbush's hire at ETSU was old-fashioned, so was hiring a defensive coordinator instead of an offensive coordinator. Consider this. You are hiring a defensive coordinator from a strong SEC program. Now, what's really the difference between hiring Greg Schiano, who the fans just revolted against, he's a defensive coordinator, from a strong Big Ten program, is this SEC bias? I mean, Chiano, he's got the pro experience. He's got the head coaching experience. Jeremy Pruitt, 11 years before he was the Vols head coach, had been a high school coach. By the way, DeBole, 11 years before that time, he had coached for Bill Belichick. So who's better to bring in the modern innovations of the NFL and of pro football into the college game, just like he did to Alabama, 
yeah, it would be DeBolt. But they went old school. They went, ah, you got to build that defense. Got to go with the defensive coordinator. At the time, I said, okay, coordinator for from Alabama. Good. I didn't realize how inarticulate Jeremy Pruitt is. I really did not figure that out. Now, I got to tell you this. Uh, I really think that if Tennessee goes three and seven, it's kind of a long shot that Pruitt gets fired. I think that the assistant coaches will be made the scapegoats. Remember the assistant coaches who didn't take pay cuts, they'll be looked upon, uh, and they shouldn't be, but they'll be looked upon as bad guys and scapegoats, and they'll get the ax. And so, you know, T. Martin will probably be, I would theorize, theorizing, Move to offensive coordinator, same job he had at Southern California. Jay Graham will be kept on. Both Martin and Graham took the pay cuts. Nobody else did. And I don't think that Phil Fulmer, who was fired after a 3-7 and seven record after a winning season, wants to do the same thing to his head coaching hire. If he does, it's somewhat hypocritical. Also, Tennessee, for some reason, uh, gave Pruitt an extension. I know that uh, the Vols did go 8-5 and five a year ago, but again, it was against tomato cans, and you had to be able to see that. And you had to also understand, boy, th this Jeremy Pruitt really does struggle a little bit with talking to the media and to people in general. Uh, so you have that. And I just don't think that after the contract extensions, Phil Fulmer through 2023, Jeremy Pruitt somehow to 2025 are going to get the ax after this season. Unless, unless, unless a loss to Vanderbilt. Loss to Vanderbilt changes everything. Loss to Vanderbilt is what got rid of Derek Dooley. Loss to Vanderbilt was the beginning of the end for Butch Jones. Lost to Vanderbilt this season, and it'll be one or the other for Jeremy Pruitt, either this year or the next, let's face it. Lost to Vanderbilt, you're in bad shape. Now, it'll also mean the legacy of Phil Fulmer will not necessarily be his 1998 National Championship. Sports is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately game. And instead, it will be, well, let's see here, Carl Torbush was strike one, Jeremy Pruitt really looks like strike two, and it appears that the final legacy of Phil Fulmer would be trying to avoid strike three in his third head coaching hire. I'm Marky e. Bilson. I ask that you follow my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find it just by searching my name on YouTube and also subscribe to my Medium page where you can read out these videos oftentimes. Until next time, I'm Marky e. Bilson.